everyone this is my next video today i'm going to explain lit code question number 145 binary tree post order traversal given the root of a binary tree written the post order traversal of its nodes values post order means first it will traverse left then right then it will print root in the example one the given one the left is null then right is 2 and for the two node the left child is 3 and right is null okay and output is returning in 3 2 1 nothing but it is first return the uh, left child then right then root okay let's look at briefly understand how the post order traversal is going to work in the whiteboard let's look and understand how the post order is going to work how it will traversal means first it will traverse left then right then root okay how it is going to print means see first we will see the left for a this is the b left for b this is the d left for this d and check yeah this is null so we will be checking right right is null so we will be printing d first we will print d okay then for b node left is completed now it's time to print right right for b for uh, for e we will check the left and right their left is null and right is this null so we are printing e now for b left has completed right has completed now time to print this b now left has completed now we will traverse right for right the c will be the root now we will check for the left here left is f for the left we will check the f is null so we will check the right right is also null so it's time to print root f now for c the root left is completed now it's time to traverse uh, right right is null so now it's time to print this c now we will print c now we'll go back left node has completed and right node has been completed now it's time to print this root now let's we can understand the logic how it is going to work see post order means first we will traverse left then right then root will be printing first we are passing this a as root okay now we'll check in the a the root will be a okay it is null or not if it is not null means what we'll do we will traverse left okay now we will traverse left now we can b now we are passing the b as root now we we'll check b is null or not it's not null so we will recursively call left see it came d now d will be the root we will check d is not null so we will be called recursively left it's recursively left is null if it is a null means will return will go back now this step has completed now we will call recursively right right node is also null we will go back now left has completed right has been completed now it's time to print by using the push back function we will be stored in the vector now d will be printed now see the left node has been completed when b is called upon now it's time to recursively we will uh, traverse right child here right is e for e we will check left and right here left is null and right is null so left and node is completed right node is completed now it's time to print e now root has been completed now left node has completed right node has completed now it's time to print b the b is root so now for when a is called this complete left subtree has been traversed now it's time to traverse right subtree now we will traverse e okay because c is not null so we will be traverse left child of c the left child of c is f now f is called now for f is not null so we will traverse left child of f left child of f is null so we will go back now we will traverse right the right is null we will go back and we'll print this f now for c the left node has completed now we'll traverse right now g the g is not null so we will traverse left the left is null we'll go back now we'll traverse right the right is null we'll go back and we'll print g because g is the root now for c the left node and right node is completed now we will print this for a left subtree has been traversed and right subtree has been traversed now it's time to print a now we will print a now we'll go back okay this is the traversed by using a post order traversal okay so we can enter into the coding part we are creating on traversal function we are passing the root and vector of reference of vec as parameter to the traversal function now we'll check the root is null or not if the root is null means what we will do just we will return we'll go back in case the root is not null means so we will traverse recursively left node and then we will recursively traverse left child then we will print the root by using the push back function okay and that will be stored in the vector this is the main function 
uh, vector it is integer type we have uh, given post order traversal as function we pass the root with the tree node type okay now we are creating empty vector which is integer type with the name vec to traverse all the nodes and it will be stored we will take a traversal function we are passing the root and vec as parameter Finally, we will return in BEC of the traversal completed. Let's we can dry on this example. Let's see, first we are passing the 2 as root. Now we are checking the 2 is null or not. Yeah, it's not null. So we are recursively traversing left. The left is 4. Now we are passing the 4 as root. See, for 4 is not null. So we are recursively traversing left. Left is 8. Now 8 we are passing as root. It is not null. So we are traversing left. See, uh, now it reached null. If it is null means we are going back. Return means we are going back. Now this step has been completed. Now we are traversing right. The right is null. So we are going back. Now we are printing this 8. We are storing in the vector. Now left node has been completed. Now we are traversing right. Now the root is 10. We are recursively traversing left. Here left is null. We are going back. Now we are traversing right. The right is null. We are going back. For 10, left node and right node is completed. Now it is time to print root 10. This 4, left node has completed, right node has been completed. Now it's time to print this root 4. Now when 2 is called, total this left subtree has been traversed. Now it's time to traverse right subtree. Now the root value will be 6. When 6 is not equal to null, so we're traversing left. The left is null, we're going back. We traversed left. Now it's time to traverse right. And now we're passing 12 root. Now we're traversing left. The left is null, we're going back. Now we're traversing right. The right is null, so we are going back. The first one, when you called, a left node has been completed, right node has been completed. Now it's time to print 12. For 6, the left node has been completed, right node has been completed. Now it's time to print this 6. Total left subtree has been traversed, right subtree has been traversed. Now it's time to print this root. Now the traversal has been completed. This is the logic by using the recursive approach. Let's we can understand the time complexity and space complexity of this logic. The time complexity is taking big of n, where n is the number of nodes in the binary tree and we are visiting all the nodes exactly once, so it is taking the time of big of n. Where comes the space complexity is also taking big of n. We are creating a vector to store all the nodes, so it is taking the n space. And each node we are calling function, it will take one space for each node. Total there are n nodes, it will take n space, so that is also taking n. Total it is taking big of 2n. Overall, we can tell it is taking big of n. Let's we can run the code. Yeah, this is accepted solution. Let's we can understand how the iterative approach is going to work. Let's we can understand the, how the iterative approach is going to work. First, we are creating empty vector to store the all the node values after the traversal has been completed. After that, we are creating two stack. Stack 1 and stack 2. One is the root element, just we will push on the stack. Next up, the one is the top element, okay. Just what we are doing, we are popping out and we will be storing in the stack too. Now we will check for one, the left node and right node are present. If they are present means just we will be pushing on the stack one. The left node is two and the right node is three. Okay. In the next step, the three is the top element in the stack one. Just we are popping out this three and we are pushing in the stack two. Now we will check the root now we will check the, the node 3 as left child and right child. Yeah, it's there. Just we will be pushed on the stack 1. The left child is 6. The right child is 7. In the next step, the 7 is the top element of the stack 1. Just we are popping out. We will be pushing in the stack 2. Now we will check for the 7 as left child and right child. Here left child is null and right child is also null. Okay. In the next step, the top element is 6. Just we are popping out. We are pushing in the stack 2. Now we will be checking the 6 as left child and right child. The left child is null, the right child is null. In the next step, the 2 is the top element. Just we are popping out from the stack 1, we will be pushing in the stack 2. 2 node, the left child and right child are present. Yeah, it's present means just we will be pushed onto the stack. Left child is 4, the right child is 5. In the next step, the top element is 5. In the stack 1, just we are popping out, we will be pushing in the stack 2. Now we will be checking the 5 node as left child and right child. Left child is null, right child is null. In the next step, the top element is 4. Just we are being popped out from the stack 1, we will be pushed in the stack 2. Now we will be checking the left child and right child. The left child is null, the right child is null. 
once the stat 1 becomes empty we will stop it's a stopping condition okay now what we will do in stat stat to until it should be empty until that it will work what we will do just we will be popped out from the top element we will be stored in the vector by using the push back function okay four is popped out from the stat to we will be stored in the vector after that five next two next six next seven next three next one okay this is the post order traversal okay so you can observe first left then right then root now left subtraction completed now right subtraction first six seven three then one okay this is the logic by using the iterative approach let's we can enter into the coding part first we created a vector it is a integer type with a name vec if the root is not present means we are returning empty we created a stack which is a tree node type with stack 1 and stack 2 first we are pushing the root in this x1 means stack 1 it will work until the stack 1 should not be empty in that what we are doing we are storing the top element in the current after that we are popping s1 we are popping out the s1 and we are pushing into the s2 stack then we are checking the current node as left child or right child if the left child is missed just we are pushing in the stack 1 if the right child node is there means we are pushing in the stack 1 okay this will work until my stack 1 should be empty when it will be empty it will come out of this while loop and we now we will checking in the s2 stack until it should not be empty Uh, until it should not be empty what we are doing is we are performing uh, for top element we will be pushing in the vector we will be after that we will be pop out from the stack 2 it will work until the stack 2 become empty uh, once it becomes empty it will come out of this while loop finally we will be returning vector which is the post order traversal has been completed that values will be returned in the ac okay let's we can dry run then we will come to understand we will be creating vector starting with empty we will be creating vector which is the integer type with the ec to store all the node values after traversal has been completed we created stack s1 and s2 this is s1 this is s2 starting uh, we will be push the root in s1 a will be pushed in s see s1 is not empty yeah this condition is true our top element is a just we are popping out and we will be pushing in the stack 2 now we we'll check this a is the current node okay check we are checking the left and right the left is there means just we are pushing in the stack 1 if the right node is present means we are pushing in the stack 1 a the left node is b and right node is c we are pushing b and c in the next step our c is the top element just we are popping out and we are pushing in the stack 2 now you are checking the for the c left side and right side yeah left side as f just we are been pushed it But right child is not present. This we are not pushing. In the next step, your f is the top element. Just we are popping out. We will be pushed on the stack two. Now we are checking the left child and right child of our f. These are null. If it is null, means we will go to next step. Uh, in the next step, b is the top element. Just we are been popped out from the stack one. We will be pushed in the stack two. Now we will check for the b, left child and right child. The left child is d. Right child is e. we will be pushed the left child is d the right child is e in the next step e is the top element just we are popped from the stack 1 we are pushing in the stack 2 now you are checking the left child and right child your left child is null the right child is null okay in the next step the d is the top element just we are popping from the stack 1 we will be pushing in the stack 2 now you are checking the left child and right child for d the left child is null the right child is null now the stack 1 is becomes empty once stack 1 is become empty we will come out of this while loop now while not equals to stack 2 empty it should uh, it should become empty until that we will work what we are doing just we are the top element we are pushing in the vector after that we are popping out see so this d is pushing the vector we are popped out now e will be pushed pop it out b will be pushed in the vector pop it out f will be pushed in the vector they are popping out c will be pushed in the vector pop it out a will be stored in the vector they are pop it out okay finally we will be returning this vector it is the 
post order traversal and will completed okay this is the approach by using the iterative approach let's you can understand the time complexity and the space complexity of this logic the time complexity is taking big of n where n is the number of nodes in the binary tree we are visiting all the nodes exactly once so it is taking the time of big of n the space complexity is taking big of 2n where n is the number of nodes in the binary tree because here we are using vector to store all the node values so it is taking n and also we are using stack 2 to store all the node values so it is also taking n total it is taking big of 2n let's we can run the code yeah this is accepted if you can submit yeah this is accepted solution thank you guys for watching my video